Hey guys, welcome back. We've been talking about capacitors for the last two uh, videos. We've been looking at how they behave when I connect them in DC circuits and then we looked at how to add them up if I have them in series and also how to add them up if I have them in parallel. But uh, you know, that's interesting and there'll be a homework assignment that gets us to practice that. But uh, what we're really concerned about in this course is how capacitors behave in AC. Now if I take a capacitor and connect it to an AC circuit, like this, well, now I got a voltage, you know, that looks like this, right? So I've got this voltage trying to flow this way and then this way and this way and this way. And what's actually occurring is this capacitor will constantly be charging and discharging because the voltage is continuously changing. So um, anytime I have a well, what I could really say is that this capacitor causes current to flow in an AC circuit, even though in a DC circuit, it does cause current to flow, you know, when things are changing, but then when things are not changing, there's no current flowing. Here again, I've changed the circuit because I've, you know, discharged it and I get current flow again. This thing is going to cause current to flow all the time because the voltage is constantly charging and discharging the capacitor. So I'm going to write that as a note and you can if you want to, but in AC a capacitor causes current to flow all the time because it is constantly being discharged charged and being charged and discharged and you know what guys you guys should let me know if you want me to write notes like this if you'd rather just have me talk and draw and do diagrams I can do that also uh, but um, you know I'm trying to keep it sort of similar to how it would be if we were in the classroom and this is probably a note I would write but if that's wasting your time uh, just let me know uh, send me a ma message saying like just talk and I'll uh, you know depending on what students say I'll make a decision okay but uh, for now I'm gonna continue to write notes so now if a device in a circuit causes current to flow all the time then another way to put that is that it limits current. Just like a resistor, if I put it in a circuit, it causes current to flow, right? I also say that a, lim a, current, a resistor will limit current. And uh, so the next note I'm going to write about this is that I'm going to say this current limiting effect is known as capacitive reactance. Okay, so this current limiting effect is known as capacitive reactance. And so now we've got resistance that you know limits current in an AC circuit. We've got inductors, XL, that limit current in a circuit. Now we've got capacitors that if I put them in an AC circuit, they limit current. And uh, so I've got resistance inductive reactance and now capacitive reactance. And so the uh, symbol for capacitive reactance is XL and the formula to calculate XL is XL is equal to one over two pi FL. Oops, XC, what a goof, XC, man okay the symbol is not XL it is XC and to calculate XC it is 1 over 2 pi FC now the other formula that we used about inductors just as a reminder was XL is equal to 2 pi FL that was for inductors now we have a capacitor formula it's XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC where XC is the capacitive reactance in ohms you know, 2 and pi, F is the frequency, C is the capacitance in farads, okay? So, XC is 
capacitive reactants in ohms. F is frequency in hertz. And C is capacitance in farads. Okay, guys? So I'm going to get a new piece of paper. We're going to calculate this. So let's say I have an AC circuit, guys. It's got a capacitor in it. I'm going to see if we can figure out two things. How good is this at limiting current? And what is the current in the circuit? So let's say I had 120 volts, 60 hertz. This thing is 350 microfarads. What we're going to calculate is XL and, oops, XC and I. Now, XC is going to be 1 over 2 pi FC, which means it is 1 over 2 times pi times 60 times point zero 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 three five zero. Okay, this number has to be in farads. To get from microfarads to farads, you always move the decimal place back three. I'm going to make your lives a little easier for a second here, guys. I'm going to show you some possibilities so that this doesn't get a, to be a mistake in your homework. There's sort of a couple of different possibilities for values of microfarads that you're going to see from me. You know, let's say you have 41 microfarads. The other possibility is you have a number like 390 microfarads. The other possibility is that you have a number like 1350 microfarads. In other words, you have a two-digit number, a three-digit number, or maybe a four-digit number, which is kind of the, you know, possibilities that you could have from me, at least, as far as microfarad value. Well, all you have to do to get this, you know, moved over properly is to make sure you end up with six digits. So if you end up with a two-digit number, make sure you put four zeros in front of it. Okay, guys? If you have a three-digit number, make sure you put three zeros in front of it. If you have a four-digit number, just put two digits in front of it. Okay, this is going to allow you to easily convert numbers into farads or microfarads into farads. Make sure it has six when you're done and you'll be fine, which is what I did here. I had three there, so I put three zeros in front of it. It's right there. Enough of that. Let's calculate this. Um... Now, I'm going to use the 1 over X button to calculate this, okay, because it's easier, at least for me. Uh, what I'm going to do is calculate all the stuff on the bottom and then hit 1 over X. So, the way I do this, 2 times pi times 60 times 0 0.123350. Then I hit equals, okay, then I hit 1 over X, equals. And what I'm getting is 7.5 you know, seven, nine ohms. So now I'm gonna calculate that again because I just wanna make sure I didn't screw it up. Two times pi times 60 times 0 0.000350 oh, equals one over X equals. Yeah, I'm getting the same answer twice, so I feel pretty confident about that. So in this particular circuit, guys, this thing is gonna behave or have a current limiting ability of 7.379 ohms. And that's the answer to this one, 7.579 ohms. And now I can calculate the current in this circuit. I is going to be E. Well, I is always the voltage divided by whatever it is in the circuit that's limiting current. If it's a resistor, then it's R. If it's an inductor, it's XL. If it's a capacitor, it's XC. If it's all three or a combination of them, it'll be Z, okay, because Z is going to be the sum of all the things in the circuit that limit current. Since I only have a capacitor in there, uh, I'm going to go E over XC, and so it is 120 over 7.579. 120 divided by answer, 
15.83 amps flowing in this circuit. Okay? Now, before we uh, call it quits on this video, I'm going to show you one other handy thing. I'm going to get a different color marker out here, maybe this nice orange one, and that is this formula. Now, you might have to tra transpose this formula in order to, uh, you know, solve for F or solve for C. And so let's look at it for a minute. I'm going to show you how it's transposed, and then we'll talk about it. But uh, let's look at it here. XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC. Now, let's say you were solving for C. Well, the first thing you'd have to do is transpose this formula. How the heck am I going to do that? Well, the rule for transposing formulas that have a fraction is you multiply both sides by whatever's on the bottom. So this becomes XC, 2 pi FC, is equal to 1. All right, now we haven't transposed anything. We've taken this, multiplied it by this side, and also multiplied it by that side. That eliminated it on that side. And put it all over here. Now let's say we were solving for C. Well, in order to get rid of all this other stuff, I would have to divide by it and then do that on this side. Okay, and that would eliminate all this good stuff here and I would get C is equal to one over, you know, two pi F X C, really. And the exact same steps would occur if I was solving for F and so if I wanted to solve for f, I would end up with this, 1 over 2 pi x c c, all right? So what I'm trying to show you is those are the three possibilities for this, trans, this particular formula. And all three of them, it's just 1 over all the other stuff, okay? So if I'm solving for x c, it's 1 over everything. If I'm solving for C, it's all one over all that stuff. And if I'm solving for F, it's one over all the other stuff. All right, so don't sweat it. When you're transposing this, it's just going to be one over all the things, no matter what you're solving for. All right, guys, so that's it for now. I will continue on soon. I will assign the homework, you know, in your course because I can't remember. Well, let's, yeah, let's see if I can figure it out. Give me a second here. We'll uh, look up the homework. There's going to be a couple of homework assignments here. I'm flipping. You'd think I'd be a little bit more prepared. Unit 4 handout 1, by the way, is a whole bunch of formulas that we've been using and are going to be using. So you can look at that if you want to. Uh, unit 4 handout 2, uh, capacitors and time constants, that's for homework. So unit 4 handout 2. And then unit four handout three, capacitive reactants, practices this formula right here. Though that's your homework, okay? Pretty soon we will start RL series circuits. That'll be next lesson. Have a great day. Be safe out there, boys and girls.